Hey guys, this is Will from Loops and Worship, and I just want to shoot a follow-up video to solve a common problem I think a lot of people are having running the live control template and trying to get it to sync up to Ableton Live. Did a couple other videos that were really popular, a lot of people enjoyed them. I want to show you one of the most common issues uh, I'm hearing from people, and that's trying to get the drum pads and the keyboard section of the live control template to work with live. So this is kind of the issue. Most people get everything set up, everything's tweaked like the previous video I did, and uh, everything's working fine. So you can see as I'm scrolling here in live, I'm also scrolling um, on the iPad. As I'm scrolling on the iPad, I'm scrolling in live, I can change volumes, uh, drum rack volume. Everything is working properly. I can arm um, and unarm tracks. But as I go over to my drum section, you can see I'm selected on my drum track here in live and I'm trying to play and nothing is happening, okay? So here's the first thing. If you're running into this issue to kind of figure out if you are, um, before you even hop over your drums and try to play them and, and see if sound comes up, this is how you can tell if you're gonna have that issue. Over in the upper right hand corner, uh, this is our MIDI input indicator. So if live is receiving MIDI uh, incoming MIDI signal, that will light up. So you can see as I'm hitting the drum pads where it's not lighting up, this guy, so we know there's an issue. A couple things we need to do before we solve our issue. First off, go into Live's Preference pane, go into your MIDI Sync tab, and remember to get to our Preference pane, our shortcut is Command Comma, or Control Comma if we're on a PC. Uh, we wanna make sure everything is set up like we discussed in the previous video with Control Surface, all that fun stuff. But under our uh, MIDI port section for input, we wanna select from Live Control 1, we wanna turn Track On, okay? So we wanna make sure we can record things, set up good there. Now still, nothing's happening. Most people even get to that point and they say something must be messed up. Here's the other step, kind of the hidden step. This is something I discovered after using it for a while. Head over to your Live Control app, which again, this functions as uh, sorts, uh, sort of an in-between between your iPad and Ableton Live so they can communicate. If you look at this long enough, you may already see what the issue is. Under MIDI port section, we need to make sure this is set to from Live Control 1, okay? We want our MIDI port to be from Live Control 1, not whatever else is set there by default. Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, now how to have that come back and default to from Live Control 1. I may have to dig into that a little bit. So every time I start this up, I always make sure that's set up properly. If we head back over to Live, now if we look in the upper right hand corner, as soon as I hit my drum pad here, we should see that start to show up. And we see it. Okay, so it's receiving signal. So as I play through these, uh, I'll play through a couple pads so we hear a sound. There we go. There's one. Now the other thing we have to do with this is we may have to drop our octave till we find the sound we want. So um, I'm you know expecting like a, a low kick to be here. So I'm gonna go to my octave down. Okay. Lower tom. And there's my nice 808 kick. Okay. So I can kind of scroll through here. And there's my drum sounds that set up uh, towards working wonderfully. Same thing with the keys. I can drag in a keys preset, um, and I'm going to use the sound from our textures collection here. Let's see if I can dial one up. So we're going to textures and airy guitar pad. Okay, nice little cool guitar sounding pad. As soon as I drop that in, I'm going to go over to keys. Okay. And you see that sound is loaded up. It's pulled into keys. What's nice is we have um, these knobs here where we can tweak with what the macros are on uh, that instrument rack if we're using an instrument rack. Really, really nice. Uh, pretty cool functionality. Another problem a lot of people are having is uh, they're saying there's a delay between when they hit things and um, when they actually hear them. So what that's commonly called and uh, in MIDI land when we're working with MIDI is called latency. So there's a delay between uh, let me go over to my drum track, make sure it's armed between when I hit that kick on my iPad and when I actually hear it. A really quick, easy way to solve that. Again, let's head over to our preference pane. Again, command comma. This time we're gonna go into our audio tab, okay? What you need to adjust, again, we're here in latency, which again is essentially a delay between when we hit something, trigger something, and when we actually hear it. We're gonna go to our audio tab under the latency section. We see we have buffer size here. Um, if you have a big delay, you're gonna to wanna to reduce your buffer size, okay? And a, a trick I tell most people is as you're recording, try to keep your buffer size low because you add more tracks, uh, audio tracks, audio effects, loops, all that stuff. As you're, you're putting more of a, a load on your CPU, increase your buffer size. Sometimes if you keep your buffer size low, you'll start to hear this almost kind of gritty uh, digital overdrive bitrate kind of thing happening when you have too much going on. Uh, 
normally increasing your buffer size will solve that. So I have mine set pretty low, 125 samples. If I crank it up uh, and hit apply, there should be a pretty nasty delay here. You can kind of see it, I hit it and then it sounds. Okay, and if I reduce that uh, pretty low, we'll see how low we can get it before we start getting that grit. It's almost instantaneously, okay? Uh, so as soon as I hit it, I hear it, which is kind of nice. So as you're doing this, you're trying to play, play the drum pads, trying to play the keys. Um, you may have to tweak that a little bit until you find the sound, uh, the exact sound that you want. So that's, again, um, one of the most common issues. People are emailing me saying, I, everything's working great, but I can't get the drum pads or the keys to work. So again, all you got to do is tweak uh, your MIDI sync tab. Make sure you're set to receive input uh, from Live Control 1 and you're set to where that uh, track is turned on. And then in your Live Control app, most important part, make sure your MIDI port is set uh, to from Live Control 1. And as long as you're set there, you should see MIDI data show up upper right hand corner of your screen. And if you are, then you're good to go. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully there'll be some more uh, as we run into more issues trying to solve, troubleshoot more issues with the Live Control template. Again, shoot me any questions you have at will at loopsandworship.com. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, don't ask for any money, but I'd love that you would check out our site, loopsandworship.com, check out the blog. Uh, send me any questions that you have, uh, anything you love to see a blog post on. have lots of cool training and, and resources for using loops um, over on the site. So love to uh, get to know you. Check out our mailing list. And uh, thanks again for watching.